In this section, we're going to be looking at how we can store data in collections. Now, if you came from my previous course, we looked at how we can store data using arrays. So just as a quick recap, let's create a quick array. So remember, the syntax of an array is first the data type. So in this case, let's create an integer array. Then you use square brackets to indicate that this is an array. Then the name of the array, so I'll call this test array. And then say equals new int. And then in the square brackets, we need to specify how many integers will be in this array. So for example, if I say five, that means there will be five integers in this array. Then once the array was created, we would store data inside of it like this. We would say test array sub zero. Then we would place our value. So this means that the first element of the array will have the value 100. And I can do this all the way up to five. So I'll say test array sub, sub two equals 300, test array sub three equals 400, and test array sub four equals 500. So remember, since there are five elements and the first element is zero, it would be zero to four for all the possible indices. Now this is great and it works well, but the problem is, is that we have to know how big our array is going to be while we're building our program. And in reality, that's just not practical, right? Think about applications that you use on a daily basis, things like Twitter, Instagram. On these applications, you have lists of data, right? On Twitter, we have a list of tweets, and that's stored in some type of collection. But when they were building Twitter, they didn't know how many tweets there were going to be, so they, didn't, they couldn't use an array to store all those tweets because they don't have that number. They need some collection that can dynamically grow depending on how big the data set is during runtime. So as a programmer, what would be really great for us is to have some kind of collection that we can use that can be any size. It can hold four elements, a thousand elements, even a hundred thousand elements. And we can write that code once and we never have to worry about the size. So in the next couple of videos, we'll take a look at how we can solve that problem. And then throughout the rest of this section, we'll take a look at other types of collections that we can use to store data. And we'll talk about the pros and the cons of each of those types. And we'll tap into data structures, which is sort of like a computer science topic a little bit. This is not a computer science course, so I just want to talk about the basics of it so that you can have an understanding to make the right decisions when building your applications.